This Week in Jamaica Now. The teacher laid to rest. Former Governor General Sir Howard Cook buried after state funeral in Kingston. Outrage after a man arrested for possession of ganja is beaten in police lockup and killed. Jamaica confirms locally transmitted cases of the chikungunya virus and is the new anti-corruption agency lawful? The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. Reach anyone anywhere in the world with the Gleaner Online. Rich media, interactive banner ads, dynamic page wraps. With over 319,000 video views per month, place your video ad online and target select countries, states, and even cities. Increase. Target. Track. I'm Carleen Brown and this is Jamaica Now. Hundreds of Jamaicans on Friday bade farewell to former Governor General Sir Howard Felix Hanlon Cook. Sir Howard was buried at the National Heroes Park following a state funeral at the Cathedral of the Most Holy Trinity. Sir Howard died on July 18 at the age of 98 years. I was a little different. Not only did I spend my formative years with my grandpa, I was fortunate to have spent approximately 80% of my life around grandpa, and I'm ever so grateful to have done so. You see, grandpa was a leader by example. He could teach you about life without even saying a word. And sometimes you really didn't want him to say anything, especially if you were in the wrong. The government and people of Jamaica share your pain at the passing of your loved one, husband, father, grandfather, brother, and friend. Our condolences are laden with gratitude and our final farewell full of love for someone who stands tall in our memories as one of Jamaica's most illustrious sons and one of our gentlest souls. Sir Howard has passed on from this life our beloved teacher has ended his earthly sojourn. His memory shall live in our hearts and his work shall shine on in the life of our nation. In other news, the government is considering a policy against arresting people for the possession of small quantities of ganja until a new law is passed decriminalizing its use. The move follows the death of St. James construction worker Maria Dean, who died from brain and other injuries he received while in lockup at the Barnett Street Police Station in St. James. Dean was taken into custody on Sunday after he was allegedly held by the police with a ganja spliff. There are different accounts of how the 31 one-year-old man was injured. His family has said doctors were told he fell from a bunk bed. However, the police reportedly told his relatives that Dean was beaten by cellmates. The Justice Minister says the situation underscores the need for Jamaica to decriminalize the smoking and possession of small quantities of ganja. There are calls for the police to be issued with appropriate firearm holsters. Last week, a mentally ill man reportedly disarmed a policeman in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew, and used the weapon to shoot two people. The madman was eventually shot by an off-duty police officer before he and the other two people were taken to hospital for treatment. It was later revealed that the policeman was not using the standard regulation holsters for the gun he was carrying. The matter is being probed by the Independent Commission of Investigations. The opposition is questioning the legality of the recently formed police agency tasked with tackling public corruption. The police anti-corruption branch and the major organized crime and anti-corruption task force have been merged to create the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency. According to the National Security Minister Peter Bunting, the agency would report to the National Security Council on matters of policy and performance. But the opposition spokesman on national security, Derek Smith, says the security minister must urgently make a clear distinction between what performance matters would go to the Security Council. He says this is important because matters relating to performance are linked with operational matters which, based on the law, are the responsibility of the Commissioner of Police and not the minister. Reporting to the Security Council on policy, it's acceptable, but there is a thin line between performance and operational activities, and this is where there is a conflict, and perhaps this needs some clarification. 
It is very important in, in that the, the um, Constabulary Force Act clearly divides the, the responsibility um, of the, the minister as it relates to policy and the responsibility of the commissioner as it relates to operation. Jamaica has now confirmed its first two locally transmitted cases of the chikungunya virus. Previously, two imported cases were reported. The affected parishes are St. Thomas, St. Catherine, Kingston and St. Andrew. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson says the ministry has implemented intense vector control activities, including fogging the communities of the affected persons every three days. He's also urging Jamaicans to destroy mosquito breeding sites and take the necessary steps to protect themselves from being bitten by the insect. There could be a boycott of the recently opened North-South Highway by truckers if there is no reduction in the toll rate. President of the All-Island Truckers Association, Leonard Green, says the $1,000 toll rate for Class 3 vehicles is excessive and will hurt business. According to Mr. Green, if the government does not reconsider the rate, then truckers will have no choice but to stay away from the bypass. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller last week officially opened the highway, which bypasses Mount Rossa. Interim Chairman of Jamaicans for Justice Dr. Barry Wade has insisted that the Interim Board of the Human Rights Lobby Group was constitutionally appointed. The Interim Board was appointed in the wake of a series of resignations following the unauthorized implementation of a sex education course in six privately run children's homes. But following the announcement, questions have been raised about the constitutionality of the board. According to the Interim Chairman, the JFJ's constitution gives remaining board members the authority to co-opt members to the JFJ. The Constitution is very clear. The remaining board members have the power to co-opt to the board. And this is what they did. And they co-opted eight new members onto the board, which is what the which, which is what the Constitution allows. And it was and it was done at the at the at the EGM in the presence of nearly forty board nearly forty members of the organization. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Carleen Brown, and as we go, remembering the teacher, more from the funeral of former Governor General Sir Howard Cook.